If you are like my client, Miss Lim and her friend from Malaysia, who are looking to buy a property in Singapore as they have been working here for the past six years as a PR, this video is for you so you can now take advantage of the latest cooling measures updates to your favor and emerge winners in the end to make six figures profits in a private property safely. So the big question is this, how busy professionals and homeowners like us make six figure profits from the property we own safely? by doing it with research, data and numbers. How do we buy in a way without complications and half-guessing regardless of the market conditions and still remain profitable? That is the question. Here, I will share with you exactly what we do and how we do it. My name is Simon Tan and welcome to Singapore Real Estate Insider. Hello everyone, Edmund here, your Singapore Real Estate Insider. I've been getting a lot of questions from many who are Malaysians about how to take advantage as a PR in Singapore to make six-figure profits in private property safely. You have been working here for a couple of years, accumulated savings, and you want to start owning your first private property in Singapore. Here, I want to share five important factors why buying Singapore property now to make six-figure profits safely is the best time ever even with the additional buyer stamp duty. Now don't forget to like and subscribe when you find this video useful to you and share with your other friends in the same position as you. Number one, Singapore property market supply is highly regulated as compared to Malaysia and many other countries. Singapore is not huge, therefore the scarcity of land is very real here. The other way to get land in Singapore is only two options. One, the government land sales. There is a schedule every year that controls the supply for developers to tender. And number two, the end block sales where developers buy existing buildings and redevelop them. The recent major end block was during the 2017 and 2018 where more than 30 deals were transacted in comparison to less than 10 in 2020. You cannot get land easily to build housing in Singapore and that's probably one reason why Singapore property prices have retained so much great value because the supply in a way is controlled. And this has resulted in Singapore property prices increasing over time. Number two, the other thing Singapore government is very good at is introducing cooling measures. When they realize that the market is moving too fast, the government will intervene to cool down the market. Even with the December 2021 cooling measures introduced, it's a way for the government to keep property prices in check and that Singapore will continue to have stable and affordable property prices even for the next generation of buyers like yourself and still able to see the growth in future. I have summarized this for you based on the latest cooling measures and how it will impact you as a PR. So please take note. ABSD is an additional tax stamp duty and it's a tax you pay for property. The amount you pay for ABSD is based on your citizenship status and the number of properties you currently have. Now for Singapore citizens, they will now have to pay 17% for their second property and 25% for their third and subsequent residential properties, as opposed to previous rates of 12% and 15%. Now for PRs like you, you will now have to pay additional ABSD of 25% for your second property and 30% for your third and subsequent residential properties compared to last time where both is about 15%. And if we compare to the foreigners buying any residential property in Singapore, now their ABSD is now 30%. Now for a more detailed explanation of the latest cooling measures, I've included a video somewhere around the video, so go watch it. Now, what advantage do you gain as a PR based on what I have shared so far? Now, do take note. The measures are in place to ensure genuine buyers like you who are buying your first property in Singapore gets a chance to own one and that home prices do not rise too rapidly. As they have not adjusted anything with regards to PR owning your first property, the 5% ABSD is the same as before. Unlike foreigners, who are paying 30% extra on top of the purchase price now. When I was going through consults with the PRs, one fact they shared with me is that they are very worried that the ABSD rates will increase over time, which will make it even harder 
for them to own property in Singapore. That is the reason, since 2020, there are even more PRs who instead of renting, decided to own property in Singapore. Number three, in reference to the latest cooling measures, one aspect to take note of is the TDSR. Now, as a first-time home buyer like you yourself, the new TDSR affects you by lowering your purchasing power. But of course, you can make adjustments in your finances. You can make bigger town payments and borrow lesser under your TDSR limit fits your purchasing ability. If reduced TDSR really is an issue for you to buy property, maybe you should check if you're over leveraging yourself and look for a property that's within your means instead. Now, are there ways to increase these limitations? There are of course ways to properly structure your finances, but we will not cover them here. All right, you can reach out to us if you'd like to explore more in details. Point number four, many of my clients who are Malaysians and PR all started in Singapore with renting. Some who have families and relatives here managed to save on that. Now, the bottom line is renting, no matter how you see, is using cash to pay someone else. The money is gone every single month. And don't you agree that the money could be used to better usage, to actually grow the money, right? Now imagine if your renter is $2,500 every single month, and over three years, you will have paid $90,000. These are all pure expenses. Thus, one strategy we share with many PRs is that buying a property is just like savings into a property. And when structured right, you'll be paying discounted rent instead. So let me explain in a minute. Taking into consideration the worst situation that there is no growth in the property that you buy over time first, okay? If your installment for the property is higher at $3,000 every month, over three years, you will have to pay $108,000. But don't forget, the installment is split into principal and interest. The principal is what still comes back to you at the end of the day when you sell your property. And on average, the principal after three years will be $64,800 with an estimate of about 60% of mortgage and for the $3,200 as interest. For the $3,200 versus $90,000, which is saving you more money. What if you use the right strategy to make six-figure profits by finding the right property, you'll be capitalizing on the capital gain as well. And the best part is there's no capital gain tax in Singapore. So no matter how you intend to get started, even with a smaller property first as a head start, eventually that one property can grow to a bigger one over time. So always remember, you must own something even if you intend to still continue to rent. Point number five, I can still recall many years ago when I was introduced to a Malaysian who has businesses in Penang, when I asked him why he is willing to invest in Singapore, he mentioned, although it's a lot of money, but the stability of the currency is a major factor that he is confident in. Now, can you imagine if your property increases just 5% annually, that is times three currency exchange immediately in profits back in Malaysia. And that is one of the key reasons why he not only have one property in Singapore, but gotten his son to purchase another one in Marina Bay area. Another reason is that Singapore interest rate environment is one of the lowest around. Many took advantage to borrow as it is extremely attractive and combined with a strong currency exchange rate is a double win. So in summary, number one, Singapore land are limited thus there's always control over the supply every single year. And number two, the cooling measures are here to allow a stable and affordable property prices for the future. And number three, how the TDSR is affecting you as a PR in borrowing. Number four, always work within our means to start with a smaller property first so that we can pay free rent or discounted rent in future. And number five, the strong currency exchange and the interest rate environment are very attractive. If you find this video useful for you, as well as your fellow PR friends, do share this out with them. For a more personalized solution to your property situation, we have a private group where we help busy professionals and homeowners make six-figure profits in their property safely. And I will put the link somewhere around this video that you can join us and learn the traits and strategies behind it. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so you'll be notified of any latest videos. If these videos help you, give it a like and a thumbs up and comment what are the other topics that you want us to discuss so we can make them for you in the future.